In this club random, Bill Maher and Dr. Phil discuss several topics, including Dr. Phil's man cave, his knee replacement surgery, and their views on psychology as a field. Dr. Phil shares that he has been married for 46 years and believes that having a man cave is necessary for a good relationship. Mar compliments Dr. Phil on his appearance, noting that he looks good for 72 years old, especially since he recently had a total knee replacement. Dr. Phil explains that he had bone on bone in his knee due to his years of playing football, motocross, and tennis. Mar asks if carrying too much weight can also be a factor for knee deterioration, to which Dr. Phil responds that it depends on the individual. But generally, carrying excess weight puts additional stress on the joints. The conversation then shifts to Dr. Phil's success as a cultural phenomenon, which Marr finds impressive. However, he admits that he has always thought that shrinks, that is psychologists, were the craziest people in the world. Due to an idea he once heard that many individuals go into psychology because they hope to solve their own issues by studying them. Dr. Phil mentions that he saw a study similar to that idea, but he's unsure if it's accurate. Marr also shares that he feels as though he couldn't be shrunk citing his experiences with psychiatrists that felt like guesswork and frequently tried to connect random occurrences to something significant. He recalls one instance where a psychiatrist tried to connect his mother's involvement in World War II to his current psychological state. Ultimately, both Dr. Phil and Marr acknowledge that the effectiveness of psychology varies based on the individual and the type of therapy they seek. Dr. Phil talks about people with health-engendering personalities who make others feel better after spending time with them. Bill Maher wonders if Dr. Phil's wife is one of those people, but Dr. Phil includes the janitor as an example before mentioning his wife. Bill Maher brings up the fact that Dr. Phil has never been married and jokes about the occasional bouts of incest that occur within a marriage. This joke leads to Dr. Phil opening up about his decision not to drink or do drugs due to his father's struggles with alcoholism. He also shares his love of tennis, flying planes, and other hobbies that make him happy, which prompts Bill to suggest that they may be a form of sublimation for sex. Bill argues that people may end up resenting their partners because they give up something they cherished at the beginning of their relationship. He explains how people might feel that marrying someone might rob them of the things that made them happy before being with that significant other. Moreover, Bill argues that there is nothing in marriage that gives him pleasure. Instead, he gives an example of how people always say, it's a lot of work when you ask them about their marriage. Dr. Phil agrees with Bill, but he believes that being in a relationship means agreeing to a bad trade, which is giving up being all of who you are to be half of a couple. Dr. Phil gives an example of a time he was dating Robin and she asked him to take her to her sister's house, which he rejected after thinking about it for 10 minutes. Dr. Phil and Robin agreed never to ask each other to be tortured by their relative sisters. Bill argues that having a partner might not necessarily help with problems because he knows himself best. He believes that people can reinforce their beliefs and offer helpful advice but he can figure out what he needs to do if the problem is about him. Bill Maher mentions that when people get together, they see each other at their best, rather than dragging each other down. He believes that feedback from others can be helpful in creating better decisions about oneself. On the other hand, Dr. Phil states that he may not be the best person to provide feedback since he and Bill Maher think a lot alike. Bill Maher agrees and states that he has people around him who have been with him for almost 30 years who would be a better fit to provide constructive criticism. He values having people that he can trust and that will be honest with him. He says, you know how great it is when you're older that you accumulate friendships throughout your life and you have friendships that have been going on for decades, so those people are going to be good people. Dr. Phil chimes in that, that some people need to have an intervention. Dr. Phil went on to give his perspective on the state of America, stating that he believes the country is heading towards a cliff. While he stayed non-political, he mentioned his concern about the woke agenda being pushed currently and what's happening in American colleges. He believes that the spoiled and entitled students on campuses do not believe in the concept of free speech, leading to speakers being chased off of campuses. Dr. Phil also stated his concerns about the degrees students are obtaining from universities. He used to hire college graduates regardless of the area of study, whereas now he is uncertain if the graduate can take on a project and complete it, meet deadlines, work with others, and write papers promptly. 
He believes that students are being coddled and are not being required to take classes that are useful, resulting in a degree that doesn't prove anything. Bill Maher agreed that the degrees students are obtaining, such as sports marketing and in gender studies, are not useful. Although they both agreed that current students are intellectually smart, they also believe that they lack wisdom and are not challenged enough. During the Club Random podcast, Bill Maher and Dr. Phil discussed the issue of decreased knowledge retention and a lack of curiosity among Gen Z and millennials. While Maher argued that these generations have more capacity to learn in novel situations due to increased technology stimulation, he also noted that many know nothing about basic historical or geographical facts. Maher cited examples of millennials not knowing the year America declared independence or where Utah is located. He attributed this lack of knowledge to a lack of effort on the part of young people, as well as a shift away from reading towards scrolling on phones. Dr. Phil added to Mars' concerns, revealing that millions of Americans cannot read at a basic level, but are still pushed through grade to grade. Mars described phone scrolling as a time suck that has caused young people to compare their lives to stylized and glamorous content on social media, causing spikes in loneliness, anxiety, and depression that were exacerbated by the pandemic. Both Mar and Dr. Phil criticized the decision to shut down schools despite knowing the mental health issues that would arise for young people in isolation. They both agree that low-grade reading levels at a young age can lead to high dropout rates in low socioeconomic groups, highlighting the importance of cultural education. The conversation then shifts to politics, with Bill Maher saying he doesn't care about politics, but rather culture. Dr. Phil pushes for Bill Maher to acknowledge that Trump is a dangerous predator, unlike any other politician, to which Maher hesitates. They both agree that cancel culture is a bigger issue than politics and that it is the people who are doing it to each other. They emphasize the importance of being able to air their differences and move on, with Dr. Phil explaining his own personal values of not speaking ill of those in the public eye. Bill Maher and Dr. Phil bring up the topic of judging individuals based on isolated incidents. Bill Maher gives an example regarding Mel Gibson and his drunken remarks about Jews causing all the wars in the world. Dr. Phil agrees that while it was not his finest hour, he would rather study the man's 50, 60 years of life instead of judging him on 14 seconds on the side of the road. He acknowledges the fact that people in the public eye should expect to be criticized for their actions, but he believes in leaving their personal lives out of it. Dr. Phil also speaks about his non-judgmental philosophy and how he prefers not to trash individuals. While Bill Maher suggests that critiquing individuals is necessary when discussing important political matters, Dr. Phil believes in keeping discussions on a more general level. He states that he welcomes his voice on matters of national importance and that he is now moving towards painting on a broader canvas. Dr. Phil mentions his frustration with the energy put into pronouns and suggests that the focus should shift to teaching children about pronouns rather than reassigning them. He clarifies that he is not against transgenderism but prefers to concentrate on educating young children about the basics. They then discuss the idea of political correctness and its impact on language usage. Marr complains about the absurdity of changing the word homeless to experiencing homelessness. They also discuss the issue with the use of the, which some people believe is not inclusive enough. Marr believes that the left has become more ridiculous and obnoxious over time. He argues that most people on the left don't believe in this stuff, but they are cowards to not call out the insanity of their own fringe. Marr explains that the U.S. is psychologically sick at its core because of the prevalence of mean girl snitches, hypocrisy, and inventing problems just so people can catch others not being as right as them. He expresses his frustration with woke culture and the way it's overtaken the liberal ideology. Marr argues that liberalism is about making progress and solving problems, whereas the woke culture is more about winning arguments and taking offense. Dr. Phil notes that Mars' point about solving problems rather than winning arguments is something that would be necessary for any potential political candidate. Marr agrees that being a straight talker is important, but he is not interested in running for office. Marr compares himself to Donald Trump, saying that he is not a narcissist. He jokes that if he were to run for president, he would start off at a high pole, but the problem would be trying to change from comedian to politician, and people wouldn't take him seriously. 
The segment ends with both Mar and Dr. Phil calling for a change of mindset with a focus on solving problems instead of winning arguments. Dr. Phil clarifies that there's a significant difference between being able to use simple sentences and being a straight talker. Bill Maher further asks Dr. Phil about his interest in policy and politics, to which he suggests that Dr. Phil would make a great centrist Democrat who could lead Democrats back to the center where they need to be. Dr. Phil believes that he could not win as a politician due to his reputation, which is the almost opposite reputation of what is expected of politicians. Bill Maher recommends that Dr. Phil could be a secret advisor, but the running should be done as a Democrat. The idea seems to have resonated with both men, who invest some time discussing it. Dr. Phil also promotes his TV show, but when Bill Maher asks him if he has anything else interesting to plug, Dr. Phil says he is unemployed and looking for work. He mentions that he has a scripted show on Thursdays at 9 called So Help Me Todd, which is on CBS and is doing great. Dr. Phil has already taped his last show in April and is working on other things now. He mentions that it was a moving time as they wrapped up the taping and his team has been with him for more than 21 years. During this conversation, Bill Maher and Dr. Phil discussed the idea of Oprah Winfrey running for president, which Maher had suggested in a previous editorial. Maher emphasized the importance of television in politics, saying that television is where people suckle intellectually and that someone like Oprah, who checks all the boxes of someone who could win in America, would be a strong candidate. However, they also acknowledged that the VP pick would have to be carefully chosen for diversity and representation, since two white men would not be acceptable in today's political climate. Marr expressed his desire to have a major impact on the 2024 election and get back to what matters such as improving education and family values. Dr. Phil joked that Marr could become a kingmaker, but Marr responded that he would love to actually win the election. The conversation then turned to the topic of getting schools to teach the three R's again and getting Marr's son out of a dress, to which Dr. Phil made a sarcastic comment, and the two men ended their discussion by agreeing to appear on each other's shows.